Smyrna was a thriving city on the western coast of Asia Minor. It was known for its schools of medicine and science. It was a prosperous city in the first century under Roman rule. It was a wealthy place and a center of emperor worship, including the worship of Caesar. Knowing a little bit of background on the Christians in that city would explain why they suffered so much. They would not bow to anyone except for Jesus. And so they were labeled as traitors and political insurrectionists. And you know, in today's world, Christians are often labeled crazy as well because we will not bow to anyone but Jesus. We preach that Jesus is the only way, which always goes against culture. Also in Smyrna, social and economic life was tied to pagan worship. So Christians were often cut off from making money. And as Jesus, so as Jesus says in Revelation 2, 9, they suffered both persecution and poverty. The bishop of this city was a famous Christian named Polycarp. He was also burned at the stake in this city. We don't have much more written about Smyrna other than what's in Revelation 2 because there's nothing else written in scripture. I mean, we do have things about the city because of the history books and tradition and all of that. But one thing that we do notice is that the message that Jesus gave Smyrna was completely different than the message that he had given to the church at Ephesus. But one thing for sure we know is that we can gain such incredible present day principles from what's written about this church. Hey, we just love bringing truth to you. And it's our goal to bring at least two encouraging Bible messages to you every week. So if you don't want to miss anything, make sure to click the bell and subscribe to this channel. You can also help us getting truth to more people by simply liking this video, commenting, and then sharing it. Because when you do that, YouTube pushes these messages before more people. The message to the church at Smyrna is in Revelation 2, 8 through 11. So let's just begin this message by looking at what Jesus said. He said, write this letter to the angel of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last, who was dead but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. Unlike the church at Ephesus, the church at Smyrna did not receive rebuke from the Lord, only mercy. But what's important to know is that this, from this church, we can gain invaluable and practical information for 21st century living. So I want us to start with verse 8 because it would be really easy to just jump right into what Jesus says to the church. But with all of these messages to each church, he begins by telling them a little bit about himself. He introduces himself. And so this is what he says in verse 8. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last, who was dead but is now alive. You no, know, Jesus said this about himself several times in the book of Revelation, including in Revelation 22, 13, where he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Alpha was the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Omega was the last letter. Among the Jewish rabbis, it was common to use the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet to denote the whole of anything from beginning to end. So basically, Jesus is saying that he is the sum of all of scripture and he was in the beginning and he will be in the end. Jesus is proclaiming his divinity. He is God. So imagine getting a message from Jesus. Well, that's what this is. Right from the God of the universe's lips, 
comes this message. So with that said, I think that they should sit up and take notice. So should we. Let's now divide this section uh, in Revelation 2, 1 through 8 into three categories, accolades, advice, and awards. So what is it that Jesus is commending them for? What is the accolade that he's bringing before them? Basically, it was that they did not compromise or fall beneath their troubles. Jesus commends them for this. They had a double whammy, right? They suffered because of persecution, but they also were poor, which pushed them into a poverty level. This passage tells us two things about their opposers. One, they were blasphemers. The Greek word refers to someone who calls what God disapproves right. Romans 125 says the same thing. They traded the truth about God for a lie. And these blasphemers were putting a lot of pressure on the church at Smyrna to compromise their beliefs. The second thing that we learn about the opposers is that they were of the synagogue of Satan. Basically, they were Satan's tool, Satan's puppet. Anyone who exchanges truth about God for a lie is of Satan's house for sure. Now let's relate this to 21st century living and to the church. In my lifetime, I have witnessed the world go awry. And I think that you are nodding your head too because you agree, absolutely. It seems that the world promotes everything that God calls sin. They promote it. And the sad reality is that the ungodly world, government, and the culture has been encroaching upon the church for some time now. They threaten them with closing them down, prison, hefty fines, and lawsuits if they do not comply to their demands. It's a terrible pressure for churches, Christian schools, companies led by Christians, medical institutions that want to uphold biblical morals and values. And it's getting worse, not better. These ungodly leaders are forcing worldly ideologies and putting pressure on pastors who will not compromise, telling business owners that they must offer insurance that goes against their beliefs and threatening to take away funding if they do not comply. And really, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The outside pressures are certainly crushing Christian leaders today. But with that said, we are seeing many, many leaders cave to this pressure or compromise. They are falling. They're falling. And so this is why the message to the church at Smyrna is absolutely vital to the 21st century church because they too faced such terrible pressure that it was literally crushing them as well. But they did not fall. They did not compromise. They did not buckle under the pressure. In fact, Jesus said that they were rich. One Bible dictionary defines this word rich as God's muchness. They had God's muchness, his abundance, his fullness. I simply cannot think of anything better than that. Can you? That's why I would rather stand on the side of truth and not buckle to the pressures of the world because when I do and when we do, we are given God's fullness, his abundance. What a beautiful testimony to those who have not fallen but have stood on the side of truth. They have not caved to the pressures coming at them. Let's now cover the advice that Jesus gives to this church. First, he says, don't be afraid. They would suffer greatly and some would be put in prison for 10 days, but they also find out that it was a test and how they would fare under that test would tell them a lot, would tell the Lord a lot about who they were. And then he says, also remain faithful even when facing death. Jesus is telling them how to respond to such horrible pressure. Trust God with everything that's coming your way. Stay faithful to the biblical morals and values that you know. When speaking about the terrible things going on in the world, Paul tells his young protege Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.14, you must remain 
faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. No doubt, it's really easy to get scared when facing intimidating giants. This is why I say all the time that we need to continually strengthen our faith because a strong faith will help us in our difficulties and will also help to ward off Satan's attacks. Satan's attacks. Enlisting the pieces of armor that will protect us, Paul tells us in Ephesians 6.16 that we need to put on the shield of faith. Only a strong faith will shield us. Only a strong faith. This now brings us to the awards and the best part of this whole message. For those who remain faithful and will not fall and do not fall to compromise they will receive the crown of life, a grand award for sure. We don't know exactly what this reward will be, but we can be certain that it is absolutely spectacular and something definitely worth striving for. Jesus finally closes his message to the church at Smyrna with these words in Revelation 2, 11. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. So let me encourage you today. If you're facing pressure from the outside, family, friends, anything, if you're facing pressure, then let it make you stronger, not weaker. If you make this your goal, then God will take care of you. And you will get all of God's muchness, just like the church at Smyrna.